You know the videotaped episodes of the Twilight Zone as a cost-saving measure were hit and miss, but this episode, not say it was a miss, but it was so completely bizarre and some of the special effects were very infantile, it took away from the great plot of the movie and probably one of the most scary lines in Twilight Zone history. Now, 22 is the episode 53 of TZ. The story was adapted by Rod Serling from a short anecdote in the 1944 Bennett Surf Random House Anthology, Famous Ghost Stories, which itself was an adaptation of The Bus Conductor. A short story by E.F. Benson published in the Pall Mall Magazine in 1906. It was one of six episodes of second season <coughs> that were shot on videotape in a short-lived experiment aimed to cut costs and was directed by Jack Smite. Now, according to Rod's uh, opening narration, this is Miss Liz Powell. She's a professional dancer and she's in a hospital as a result of overwork and nervous fatigue. And at this moment, we have just finished walking with her in a nightmare. In a moment, she'll wake up and, re and we'll remain at her side. The problem here is that both Miss Powell and you will reach a point where it might be difficult to decide which is reality and which is a nightmare. A problem uncommon, perhaps, but rather peculiar in the Twilight Zone. Now, the Barbara Nichols uh, character uh, is supposed to be a combination of Marilyn Monroe and Julie Garland because she had sort of Marilyn Monroe's kind of quaff in the Julie Garland style of sexuality. Now, this one, Liz awakens in her hospital room by a loud ticking of a clock. She knocks a glass of water to the floor, shattering it, then follows the sound of footsteps into the hall. She sees a nurse, half hidden in the shadow, descend to the basement in the elevator. She follows the nurse down and finds the hospital morgue, room 22. The nurse emerges from the room and says, room for one more honey. Liz screams and flees to the elevator. Now, Arlene Sachs of Star Trek uh, uh, fame, uh, the uh, estranged wife of uh, Spock, a very beautiful lady, uh, she brings Gravitas just to that one line and it sets up what should be a better episode than it was. Now, when, it, when Liz awakens, the experience begins a nightmare. Again, Liz is a professional dancer, hospitalized for exhaustion, and she's been having the same recurring vivid nightmare. She insists the dream is really happening to her, although her agent, Barney, seems doubtful. Now, uh, Bar her doctor, uh, played by Jonathan Harris of Lost in Space uh, fame, uh, tries to assure her this is impossible. He produces the night nurse who attends the morgue, and Liz does not recognize her. The doctor suggests Liz try an experiment lucid dreaming and alter one detail of the dream. That night, the dream begins again. Liz visualized a pack of cigarettes next to a glass on the nightstand. Ironically, cigarette companies were the major sponsor for TZ, so uh, talk about product placement. When the clock awakens her, she reaches for a cigarette instead of the glass. She drops the lighter, and while reaching to retrieve it, her other hand knocks the glass to the floor. The dream continues as before, ending in the morgue and it's just a repeat of the opening minutes. When Liz awakens hysterically, and a nurse is required to hold her down while the doctor sedates her, the doctor does note the, to the nurse that it's odd that Liz, who has never seen the real morgue, knows it is room number 22. After several days, Liz is discharged from the hospital. She goes to the airport to fly to her next booking in Miami Beach. She buys her ticket and is told she will be on flight 22. She been, begins experimenting sensory details from the dream, she is thirsty, distracted by the ticking of the clock that only she can hear, bumps into a woman carrying a vase with drops and shatters, and hears loud footsteps. She crosses the tarmac to her plane and climbs the boarding stairs. As she reaches the top, a stewardess identical to the nurse from the dream emerges from the cabin. She says, room for one more, honey. Screaming, Liz stumbles down the stairs and races back to the terminal. Outside the terminal, Flight 22 taxes the runway, takes off, and explodes a very shitty special effects scene. It looks like freaking a paper plate exploding, but still very effective. Now, uh, Rod's closing narration, Miss Elizabeth Powell, pro dancer. Hospital diagnosis, acute anxiety brought on by overwork and fatigue. Prognosis with rest and care, she'll probably recover. But the cure to some nightmares is not to be found in known medical journals. You look for it under portions of bad dreams to be found in the Twilight Zone. Uh, now, the original 1906 story by E.F. Benson features a large middle-aged male protagonist named Hugh Granger from the English country visiting a friend in London. He is haunted by a man dressed like a bus conductor but driving a horse-drawn hearse. He sees the same man a month later actually driving a bus that is involved in a tremendous auto accident. 
1944 surf anecdote features instead a young New York woman visiting the Carolina plantation of distant relatives, with the Hearst coachman eventually revealed to be the operator of a medical building elevator that plummets when its cables break. In the 1944 film Dead of Night, the protagonist is again male, also the name Hugh Granger, haunted by a man driving a hearse, and has a premonition about a fatal bus crash. Now, as the Twilight Zone uh, second season began, the production was informed by CBS that at about 65000 per episode, the show was exceeding his budget. By November 1960, 16 episodes, more than half of Projector 29, were already filmed, and five of those have been broadcast. It was cited as six consecutive episodes. Production codes uh, 3662 to 3667 would be videotaped at CBC, CBS Television City in the manner of a live drama, and eventually transferred to 16 millimeter film for future syndicated uh, releases and rebroadcasts. Eventual savings had amounted to only 30000 for all six entries, which was judged to be insufficient to offset the loss of depth of visual perspective that, at the time, only film could offer. The shows wound up looking a little better than set-bound soap operas, and as a result, the experiment was deemed a failure and never tried again. However, there were some videotape episodes like Night in the Meek and Static and Death that had some quality uh, to it and the lateness of the hour for that creepiness. But you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, Twilight Zone is better on film, so to show it on videotape, it was sort of gave it a, not say a cheap look, but a needy, you know, darkness look to it. Uh, high contrast as well. But Y22 works for me because obviously later on that uh, Serling was trying to work on a contract with Marilyn Monroe to do a, a remake of a, of a key uh, a production that you want to be part of. Didn't work out. But uh, at the time, they were looking for actresses that either were looking like Kim Novak, Marilyn Monroe, uh, Ava Gardner, that, uh, but uh, Arlene, uh, Arlene, uh, our, our lady from uh, Star Trek, uh, Arlene Sachs, by God, one of the most beautiful women that I've ever seen. Like uh, She also appeared in The Monkees and different other shows. But Barbara Nichols, again, uh, a vapid performance. But it still works because you can see Someone that seems that dumb could be manipulated. The only thing that I really didn't uh, appreciate about the uh, the movie, uh, the, uh, the the main character had a, a doll as a companion, so it kind of lessened the uh, what do you call it, the impact. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, twenty two continues to be a, a, a battle of wits. Some people like the episode, like me. Others find it crap. I give it three and a half out of five because. Uh, for what it was, it couldn't be any better than it was presented. But uh, the special effects with the, the, the plane blowing up, it was just, you know, for 19, you know, 1960s, uh, uh, early 60s, you could have lot, done a lot better than that. So thanks for listening, and don't forget, all requests are greatly appreciated and greatly considered. Give us a like, comment, subscribe, or share if you have time on this great Thanksgiving uh, week. And as we like to say in Northern Brunswick, keep your stick on the ice. Have a good one. Bye.